Hey everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about my work pattern while coding. This is something several people have asked. Um, the one I wrote down as a reminder to, to do this video, uh, one of you asked, what kind of work pattern do you personally find most productive when coding? Do you set out designated time periods where you focus entirely on work, then take a break? So let me talk about that. I've done a lot of different things when I have worked. I've talked about, started as a programmer, then started doing a lot of design as well, then got into production, pretty much done everything but art. So in this talk, I'm really going to talk about programming because I found that of all the tasks I've ever worked on in game development, programming is the one that is most sensitive to being interrupted. When I'm coding, and I'm sure a lot of programmers are like this, you're kind of building a structure in your head of whatever algorithm you're working on, what's left to do on it, uh, what your variables are, what globals you're thinking about, what other functions need to be written. In fact, a habit I started doing early on is whenever I would get interrupted, I had a little keystroke I would do. It was slash slash ZZZ. So it was a comment with three Zs, which just meant I got interrupted at this point. I'm kidding you not. I started doing that on rags to riches because Bard Scale Construction said I mostly coded at home. But rags to riches, I was in an office environment, got interrupted a lot because in Interplay, I worked in a cubicle for years. And then I think I, I shared an office for years after that. It wasn't until probably the last year and a half of Fallout that I had my own office. So when I'd get interrupted when coding, I'd put that slash slash ZZZ in. Nine times out of 10, if I ever got a bug report from my code, I found the error within a few lines of a ZZZ. And I could have pages without ZZZ. So I knew that getting interrupted messed up my programming. So what I did was I decided to get all my code done in my most productive period. Now for me, that's in the morning because I am at least now a morning person. I didn't used to be, I used to sleep late and stay up late. So I did a lot of my coding at night, but about 20 years ago, I adopted 23 years ago, I adopted a rescue shepherd and this dog got me up at sunrise every day to do what I called his perimeter check where he had to go outside through the back door, go along the fence line up front, because it was a wraparound yard, up to the front, check all the fence lines, and then he'd finally calm down and sit on the porch until I let him back in. And until he did that perimeter check, I could not sleep or eat or do anything. He had to go outside. So I got used to waking up five or six in the morning. Still do that today. I'm a morning person now. Thanks, Cooter. So what I found is... Every office I ever worked in was far less crowded in the morning. I mentioned this in another video. People view you as a hero if you stay late. No one cares or notices if you come in early. I like to come in early. Hardly anyone was around. And I could get a lot of work done when the office was very quiet. Now when I'm working from home, I've still noticed the house is quieter. The neighborhood is quieter. I can just get a lot more done when it's the morning. Starting at interplay actually probably before I would listen to ambient music while I coded that's why a lot of my music I've selected for video games is ambient it's inspired by the ambient I used to listen to when I coded a lot of Brian Eno a lot of Harold Budd um Aphex Twin uh selected ambient works is a really good one basically anything without um vocals because it lets you focus and some of those um, artists have really long tracks. I believe Thursday Afternoon and Neroli by Brian Eno are two of his uh, CDs that are just one long 40-minute track. So I highly recommend. So I would basically put those on, focus, work all morning. Now, I know you're supposed to only work, take a break every hour. I would tend to work two or three hours, especially if I got in really early. If I got into work at six or seven, most offices don't start picking up until around 9 or 10. So I'd work for two or three hours and then I'd take a break. Those are important. Now, 
if I was at the office, I'd get up after my morning code session and go walk around. I would check in on other people, just the people wanted it. I know I've mentioned that some people don't want me to check on them until it's the last day that something is due. Other people wanted me to check in on them every day. They probably discovered that I walked by their office in the morning around 9 or 10. It's because I was taking my coding break. I would check in on them. I'd go get something to drink. There was a cold brew coffee machine at Obsidian that was like mana or I guess Soma from heaven. It was awesome. Um, when I had my dog Cooter at Troika, I'd go take him for a walk around 9 or 10 in the morning. Um, that's when I walk my dog now. I'm home with my lab, Abby. I take Abby for a walk every morning at 9. I see a lot of my neighbors then getting ready for work. They see me go by every day around the same time. Abby likes it. I like it. It's when I take a break. I also find that just literally moving around a lot, taking a break for me is more than just standing up. I've got to get up and move around. Then when I'm back, that is when I would schedule meetings. So I like my meetings to be late in the morning or in the afternoon, uh, whether it's production meetings, meeting with publishers. Now when I do... Um, uh, Con uh, I'm working as a contractor at a couple companies, tend to schedule those meetings later. I mean, they don't know that I'm up at 5 or 6 a.m. I usually do these videos. Like right now at 6 in the morning, I'm doing this video. So all that stuff gets pushed to late morning and afternoon. Along with if I'm going to do design work, I like to push that into, into later in the day. For whatever reason, whether I'm working on system mechanics, writing lore, Back in Temple when I was writing dialogue, even though I shouldn't have been doing that, I found that I could get interrupted on that. And it didn't matter. I did the ZZZ trick a few times. Never, ever correlated the ZZZs on design work with interruptions. Most of it was, if there was design flaws, it was either something inherent in the system or that system interacting badly with another system or a balance issue. Because I was never good at getting numbers right? It's like, a, it's, a, it's a good system, but the numbers aren't, aren't balanced. Those things had no relationship to my interruptions. So eventually for design work, I stopped putting in the ZZZ. And so by the time I worked on Outer Worlds, where we had shifted from doing word docs with, you know, comments in the margin and stuff like that, we started doing online documentation on Confluence and Jira for both tasks and bugs. I never did the ZZZ trick with those because I didn't need it. However, one trick I did do, and I really love doing this, and I've been doing this for probably more than 30 years, and it's going to sound simple, and it's going to sound stupid, but I guarantee you, if you are a programmer, this will help you a great deal. And the trick is this. When you're working on your code, always save something very simple, something easy to code, something easy to get into right away for the first task you do when you get in the morning. So if I, if I while I'm coding, I come across one of those tasks, I stop, I don't work on it, I set it aside. And then what I do is when, I, when I'm finished coding for the day and I write my notes, the very first note is, why don't you code? And I write down what that element is. The reason I do that is I find when I get in in the morning, I'm often this blank slate and I'm like, what did I do yesterday? I don't, I did a bunch of things. I don't really remember what I did. If I write down that really simple, easy to get into task, what I find happens is I get, I see that note. I start the um, compiler in my IDE and I start coding that simple task. Probably connects me, makes me look at the code, makes me look at other things. Within 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, however long it takes to do that really simple piece of code, I'm back in that mindset and I can dump, jump into harder and harder tasks. Having that first task to ease me into that mindset again, it's helped me for decades with my work. It just, I, I don't know if you have this, but I just can't like switch on and go, okay, I'm coding now. I find that if I have that nice, easy task to fall into, by the time I finished it, like all my code part of my brain is active and I can do, I can jump into harder and harder tasks. So I like to leave a to-do list, but I always start it with the easy task. So at least for me, that's what works for me, which is to sum up early morning coding for two to three hours, 
starting with an easy task and pushing meetings and design and production and all other work to late morning and afternoon. This is the best way I've found to code. If you're an evening person, flip this and do all your stuff, other things in the morning and afternoon, and then late afternoon and evening, make that your programming time if that's the kind of person you are. But I think it helps in general to figure out what kind of uh, rhythm works well for you, establish it early, and then see if you can make that happen no matter where you work. So I hope this helps, and uh, I hope this answered uh, the original question.